Close your eyes and try to imagine how you feel when you get scared. How you pounce. Pum. Pum. Pums. Pums. Get sweaty. How your heart start racing. How your breath go fast. Breath goes fast. If this emotion is triggered by something that you're hearing, our brain starts to produce image of how the story might go. Most of for some most of us. Most of us kind of twisted reason. For some kind of twisted reason. For some kind of twisted reason. Want to know how the story ends. Even when the sensation of fear or danger grow as we pay attention. Everyone knows a story that made you feel this way. Okay, if you're talking about a story, it is a story that makes you feel this way. May. With discomfort. Maybe right now you remember the story about the killer that never got caught. Or the lonely street that strange thing happens late at night. Maybe we all remember the same one. Something like La Llorona, El Silbón, or even the couple. There's a mother warning us that he would come for us if we don't go to sleep early. I think you shouldn't explain the story about the boogeyman. Um, because it's it's like a bit confusing because you mentioned the weeping woman, you mentioned the um, whistler, and then you talk a little bit about and then you mentioned the, the the boogeyman. So when you explain the story of the boogeyman, it sounds like you're talking about the other two stories as well. So do not um, explain or um, talk about the the boogeyman story. Just mentioned that, you know, the, the weeping woman, the whistler, and the boogeyman. This kind of story occur urban legends. If you are using as verb, are called, so you've got to say, these kind of stories are called, careful with the pronunciation of the verb as well, called, are called. So these kind of stories are called those who goes from generation to generation, from time to time. But what are they? The Oxford Dictionary define urban legends. as a humorous or horror story or a piece of information with some kind of truth, mostly with someone vaguely 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 related or known by the teller. Another definition that we can find about urban legend is related to folklore. Those myth legends myth Myth. 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 A story that goes from the first mention that we have about urban legend is by a professor on Utah, USA, in his book Color. Careful with the pronunciation of the verb as well, called The Missing Hitchhiker America's Urban Legends and Their Meanings. There is two different kinds of urban legends. Okay, here, Daniela, you have to identify the two types of urban legends, social urban legends and horror urban legends. Otherwise, it is going to be confusing. And after that, then you tell people that you are going to talk about social urban legends first and that they have four characteristics or something. Otherwise, 
when I was listening to you saying two types and then you mentioned number one, first, third, second, I, I was a bit confused because I didn't know exactly where you were. So th that's why it's really important to mark and help the listener follow you. The main idea of this story is to make you feel like with warning, like a situation in danger. This is the kind that happens in the daily basis. The first characteristic that we can find. Okay, here you've got to say that social urban legends have got four characteristics. If you mentioned this when you were talking about, about social urban legends at the beginning, so, um, well, you can simply say something like, okay, the first characteristic of social urban legend is, the uh, second characteristic is, the third characteristic is, the fourth characteristic is, remember that you have to help the listener follow you. If you just say the first, the first, the third, it can be a little bit confusing because you are enumerating a lot of things here. So it's important for you to help the listener. Is that happen in normal situation, like a restaurant, a park, or something like that? Okay, here I do recommend you to say something like uh, the story or stories happened in conventional places like restaurants and um, parks. The second is that always happen in a small scenarios. The second characteristic is that the story happens in small scenarios. Listen to the pronunciation of the word scenarios. Scenarios. It's really rare to find a story that happens in a pretty large city. The third situation that we can find with this story. The third characteristic for social urban legends is is that no one seems to remember who tells the story before. If you ask is something that happens to someone really far known from them. The four. Just say in this uh, part, no one seems to remember who told the story first. You don't have to explain if it is someone who they do not know or someone who lives far from them. You don't have to say that. Is this a story tends to change for region or character? Or characters. We all know the story about someone who got sick because they drink from the cat, and the can was filled with pee for a rat. This story is well known in many different countries. Or the other story about. someone who later now went to a club and then he was caught in a bath full of ice because someone stole his kidneys. This story happens in many many different countries and never no one find the real truth. The other kind of urban legend is horror. With this, the emotion that is managed is fear. That, that makes you feel really, really scared. This tends to involve mythological or paranormal situation. Okay, I do recommend you to say, Daniela, something like, in this story there are generally uh, mythological or paranormal um, elements of really dramatic or tragic situations. The first characteristic... Okay, here you've got to tell people that you are going to talk about four characteristics of horror urban legends. And then you go on by saying the first characteristic is, the, uh, the second characteristic is, etc. That we have is that only happens to one person or 
if it's a group, is a small one, like three. Careful here, remember the difference between three, the number, th three, and three. Okay, so please keep that in mind. Or four. Second. second characteristic or second characteristic of horror urban legends. And we have that always, always happen in lonely places that no one can help. There. Third characteristic. We have that always happen in the dark. Finally, we have the last characteristic or the fourth characteristic the is the culture connotation. This happens mostly in those really, really old story, something like La Llorona. If we remember, that's a really popular story here in Venezuela, but it's also really well known in Colombia, Mexico, and Dominican Republic. But this story changed as. We go past from country to country. They always put something really identified of the real. Even when it's two different kinds of urban legends, they all have something similar to tell. First of all, they. Okay, now here, Daniela, you do need to tell people that you are not going to. Uh, keep on talking about types of urban legends. You have to tell people that you're going to talk about similarities these urban legends have got. So you have to say something like, now, do social urban legends and horror urban legends have got something in common? They make you feel a, tr a strong emotion, like I mentioned, danger or fear. Second Okay, since you are going to enumerate, you, of course, you're going to say first or first of all, second, second of all, second of all. It's always happened to a third or a fourth person. Th third, third or fourth, fourth person. Someone that you know? Well, you don't really know. Finally, I would simply say someone you don't know well. We have that this story tends to change for a person for change, change to person, like the game of the telephone that you serve. With a story and you end with someone really really different with some kind of information for the first one. But the really interesting part of this is why we are scared. Okay Daniela, you should say here because your ending uh, is and, and you're talking about urban legends and you have to mention it several times to help the listener remember what you're talking about you've got to say something like okay why are we sti still scared when we listen to urban legends we live in a society that we manage science that we manage facts we have internet we have many many of research to find the truth. We are currently living in the knowledge um, age. Um, science, facts, internet are important to us in the 21st century. So, why we still get caught in these stories? There's many research that find. Some research claims that some research claims that that we get caught in the stories because they reflect fears or daily basic fears most of the story can happen to anyone because always involve first of all someone relatable second one really common scenario 
and tear are really easy to find common ground fear. So that's why we always get go. Because even when we can do a quick search, we still believe that that's something that can happen. And mostly, if it's a story told by a friend, well, we would doubt of a, our friend. 